Hi guys, welcome to Techie DIY. In today's video, I'll be taking a first look at a new CNC machine from Makera called the Z1 or Z1. The machine I'm testing is a development model. It measures 350 millimeters wide, 470 millimeters deep, and 450 millimeters high. The working area measures 200 millimeters by 200 millimeters, with a z-axis height of 100 millimeters, and the machine weighs 17 kilograms. To machine longer workpieces, the pass-through back panel can be removed to use tiling techniques for extended toolpaths. This is the Z1 side by side with the Carvera Air for comparison. Let's run through its features. It has an enclosed case with an opening height of 820 millimeters, a quick manual tool changer with an included 1 8 of an inch collet, an optional quarter inch 6 millimeter and 4 millimeter collets, a tool setter for measuring tool length offsets, a touch probe for setting the Z or Z axis height, the same work clamping system as the Carvera and Carvera Air, a camera which will be used for monitoring and time lapse recordings, an emergency stop switch, a one piece cast aluminium frame, linear rails on all three axes, lead screws, NEMA 17 open loop stepper motors, and the spindle is driven by a 150 watt brushless motor with closed loop control. The Z1 features a new AeroDust air blast system, which uses a fan to blow air through the spindle body for cooling and to clear away chips. The machine doesn't have a dust chute. Instead, the floor slopes down towards the back where it channels chips and dust into the dust collection port. An external vacuum can then be connected to the dust port at the rear of the machine to collect the chips and dust. Makera offers a cyclone dust collector as an option which is automatically controlled by connecting it with a lead to the external port on the Z1. One advantage of this system over a dust chute is that it can be used with the optional rotary fourth axis and laser modules. The fourth axis offers a working area of 80 millimeters in diameter and 150 millimeters in length. The laser is a five watt 445 nanometer blue diode laser, primarily used for engraving wood, opaque plastics and PCBs. The Z1 was delivered in a well-packaged box with reinforced corners surrounded by foam and the accessories were tightly packed inside the machine. This included the accessories pack, materials pack, tool kit, optional laser and the optional rotary fourth axis. First we're going to mill some test pockets in aluminium. I've created a project in Fusion using four different tools. There are three tool paths for each pocket an adaptive roughing operation, a horizontal floor finishing operation, and a contour wall finishing operation. The Z1 post processor is not yet available, so I've used the Carvera post processor and made a few modifications. Firstly, I've set the Aeroblast to be turned on and off with a coolant type of air through tool by adding in the M811, S100, and M812 G code commands. Then I changed the coolant to be turned off after the spindle rather than before. Finally, I added a time delay or dwell so that the spindle can stabilize its speed before commencing operations. Selecting a coolant type of air through tool in the toolpath parameters enables the aeroblast during the operation. Starting with the 1 8 of an inch 12 mm single flue end mill, the solid blue light indicates that the probe should be installed. and then pressing the button initiates measuring the tool length offset. I've enabled scan margin so the probe draws the outline of the tool path. The probe sets the Z or Z axis height. Then the blue light indicates that tool 4 should be installed which is the 1 8 of an inch single flue end mill. We begin with a one degree helical ramp into the material. Then rough out the pocket using an adaptive tool path. Finish the floor with a horizontal tool path. And finish the sides with a contour tool path. Mm -hmm. 
Next we switch to the 1 8 of an inch 15mm 3 flute end mill. Increasing the number of flutes to 3 allows us to increase the feed rate and cut the pocket more quickly. The next two end mills have 6mm shafts, so we'll switch to a 6mm collet and exchange the probe shaft. To do this, pull down the quick change lever, unscrew the 1 8 of an inch collet using the spanner or wrench, install the 6mm collet, unscrew the 1 8 of an inch shaft from the probe and install the 6mm probe shaft. Now we can check that the probe fits before installing the 6mm diameter single flute end mill. We start with the 1 degree helical ramp and then an adaptive toolpath. Increasing the diameter of the end mill allows us to increase the feed rate. Finally, we install the 5mm diameter 3 flute end mill. It's squeaking slightly, especially in the corners, which likely indicates chatter. In this case, the feeds and speeds need further tuning to find the sweet spot. The finish met expectations and all dimensions were within 0.05 millimeters of the nominal 15 millimeters. Let's also have a look inside the dust collector to see what it's collected. Next I designed a threaded aluminium knob in Fusion. This part uses four tools. A 1 8 of an inch single flute end mill and an M4 thread mill for the threaded hole. A 1 8 of an inch 3 flute end mill for general milling. And a chamfer end mill for finishing the edges. We begin with a 1 8 of an inch single flute end mill. Using a boring operation to mill a 3.3mm hole. Then we switch to the M4 thread mill to cut the threads. Next the 1 8 of an inch 3 flute end mill performs a pocket operation to mill the central boss. A contour operation finishes the edge of the boss. Followed by another contour to cut the outer profile of the knob. Finally, a 90 degree chamfer bit is used to break the edges with a clean chamfer.
Here's the result. Thread milling may seem complex, but it's actually quite straightforward and extremely useful. Next, let's test the laser module. We can use Make Aerocam to create the G code. First, we set the material type and size. Then select Import Image. The image is larger than the material. To fix that, we select Graphics, right click, Transform, and Scale. Enter the new size so that it fits the material. Now we can go to the Laser Path menu and select Laser Image. I've left all of the parameters at their default values and calculate to generate the toolpath. Now we can export the G-code. Give it a file name and save. The laser attaches to the spindle and the cable plugs into a socket on the side. This was my first look at the Makeera Z1. It's an excellent small desktop machine. It has very similar features to the Carvera Air, but with a smaller working area, which would suit model making, robotics, mechanical components, and PCBs. I'm happy with its ability to mill aluminium and the accuracy that I've been able to obtain. The spindle motor never seemed to lack power. The AeroDust system is very good at clearing chips, and overall, I prefer the new dust collection system to the dust shoes used on the Carvera and Carvera Air. Makera will shortly release a new software platform, so I hope to cover that and the rotary fourth axis in the next video. Makera will initially release the Z1 with a Kickstarter campaign. For those unfamiliar with Kickstarter, it is a crowdfunding platform where backers pledge support in exchange for a reward. And it's not the same as buying from a store. Makera has a very good track record with two previous successful campaigns, but I would encourage you to do your own research.